students welcome to sunil's tutorial i'm sunil mehwani and today we'll be doing the chapter called as chemical kinetics let's see the numericals of chemical kinetics please sit down for a reaction for a reaction for a reaction a converts to b the concentration of the reactant changes the concentration of the reactant changes the concentration of the reactant changes from 0.03 molars to 0.02 molars changes from 0.03 molars to 0.02 molars in 25 minutes in 25 minutes calculate the average rate of reaction Calculate the average rate of reaction in minutes and seconds. In minutes and seconds. Calculate the average rate of reaction in minutes and seconds. Average rate is nothing but change in rate of the reaction upon change in time change in rate of the reaction is negative 0.01 upon change in time is 25 this will give you the uh, change in the or this will give you the average rate in minutes the answer for this should be 4 into 10 raised to minus 4 moles per minute they will also ask you to find out in seconds so i can say average rate I need to convert from minutes to seconds, divide by 60. 4 into 10 raised to minus 4 upon 60 moles per second. Right? Next. In our next one, please. In a reaction, 2A changes to B. In a reaction, 2A changes to B. The concentration of A decreases. The concentration of A decreases from 0 0.5 moles per liter to 0 0.4 moles per liter. in 10 minutes in 10 minutes <coughs> calculate the rate during the interval calculate the rate during the interval Now we had studied this, what is rate of reaction? Rate of reaction is nothing but the rate of disappearance <coughs> rate of disappearance of A that is nothing but now there are two moles of A therefore the rate for disappearance will be 1 upon 2 right? negative 1 upon 2 delta R by delta T that is going to be my rate of the reaction it is minus the number of moles divided by number of moles delta r by delta t so this is going to be negative 1 by 2 into negative 0 0.1 upon 10 so you will get your answer as 0 0.005 moles per liter per minute you are getting your answer in terms of per minute fine next take on next one please a first order reaction 
of first order reaction has a rate constant a first order reaction has a rate constant of 1.15 into 10 raised to minus 3 per second a first order reaction has a rate constant of 1.15 into 10 raised to minus 3 per second how long will how long will 5 grams of the reactant 5 grams of the reactant reduced to 3 grams of the reactant So very straightforward sum I can say that log of R1 upon R2 to the base 10 is nothing but K delta T upon 2.303 straightforward apply the formula uh, delta T is the only unknown I know R1 R2 I know K I know 2.303 so I should be able to get the answer the answer for this should be 444 seconds Next, take down next one, please. The rate of chemical reaction. The rate of chemical reaction doubles. The rate of chemical reaction doubles. For an increase of For an increase of ten Kelvin in absolute temperature, for an increase of ten Kelvin in absolute temperature from two ninety eight Kelvin. Calculate energy of activation if gases constant is 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. Use the formula log of k2 upon k1 to the base 10 is equal to energy of activation upon 2.303k to sense delta t into delta t change in temperature on <coughs> that is going to be T2 minus T1 right in this way upon T1 T2 right I know T1 I know T2 change in temperature I can calculate K is given to me ok this should be R just make this correction right K1 and K2 are given to me, gas is constant, I know E is the only unknown in this equation. So I should be able to get the answer for this. The answer for this should be Ea is 52.89488 kilojoules per mole. Next, take on next one please. Calculate the half life if the rate constant is calculate the half life if the rate constant is two hundred per second. 
if the rate constant is 200 per second. Now, half life period is 0 0.693 upon k. Simple straightforward formula divided, and you can get the answer. The answer for this should be 3.47. Into 10 raised to minus 3 seconds. That will be the half life period. Next, calculate half life period. Calculate half life period if the rate constant is, if the rate constant is 4 per year. If the rate constant is 4 per year, same simple straightforward sum, so half life period is 0 0.693 upon k, the answer for the sum should be 0 0.173 years. Next, calculate the half life period. If the rate constant is per minute. Calculate the half-life period if the rate constant is 2 per minute. Right? Similar to the previous sum, half-life period is 0 0.693 upon k. You should get the answer for this as 0 0.3465. Next, take the next one, please. For a first order reaction, for a first order reaction, it takes 40 minutes for decomposition, for 30 percent decomposition, for 30 percent decomposition. Calculate half life period. For a first order reaction, it takes 40 minutes for 30 percent decomposition. Calculate the half life period. First of all, let's find out the rate constant. T is equal to 2.303 upon K log to the base 10. Initial number of moles upon final number of moles, right? So in which case I can say that K will be 2.303 upon T log A upon A minus X to the base step. So you will get the value of K. Once you get the value of K, then you can find out half life period 0 0.693 upon K. That will give you a half life period. Answer for the sum should be 77.8 minutes. Next, take our next one, please. The rate law for the reaction. The rate law for the reaction. A plus B gives you product. The rate law for the reaction. A plus B gives product is K times concentration of A into concentration of B the whole square. The rate of the reaction at 25 the rate of the reaction at 25 degrees Celsius is 0 0.4 moles per second. The rate of the reaction at 25 degrees is 0 0.4 moles per second when the concentration of A is 1 mole and the concentration of B is 0 0.2 moles. Find the rate constant. 
find the rate constant. For example, everything they have given you. They have given you the formula also. R is equal to K concentration of A into concentration of B the whole square. R is given to you. K you have to find out. Concentration of A is given to you as 1. Concentration of B is 0 0.2 the whole square. To solve the equation, you should get the answer. The answer for this should be 10 mole raised to minus 2 seconds raised to minus 1. Next, take on next some case. The concentration of the concentration of N2O5 liquid bromine sorry N2O5 in liquid bromine the concentration of N2O5 in liquid bromine varies with time varies with time as follows varies with time as follows time 0 200 200 time in seconds and 600 this is time in seconds and n 5 concentration is 0 0.15, 0 0.098, 0 0.064, 0 0.042. Show that the given reaction is a first order reaction. Show that the given reaction is a first order reaction. that this given reaction is a first order reaction. Now guys, if the given reaction is a first order reaction, then the value of K, the value of K should remain same at different time intervals should remain the same time interval should remain same so let's try to calculate the value of k now they give you that you have to prove that it is a first order reaction now for a first order reaction for First order reaction. First order reaction formula is K is equal to 2.303 upon T log of initial concentration upon final concentration to the base 10. Right? Now let's consider there be new four cases. So let's consider case 1. If I get the value of K in same in all the cases, then it is a first order reaction because I am substituting all the values in first order reaction. For case 1, the initial concentration is 0 0.15, the final concentration is 0 0.098 and time, the time difference is 200 seconds. Substitute these values in the formula, I have already given you the formula. Substitute these values in the formula, you should get a certain value of K. Right? Case, I am not showing you the substitution, I have written the formula here. All you have to do is substitute these values in the formula. Case 2. For case 2, my initial concentration still remains the same. 
initial concentration is 0 0.15, final concentration is 0 0.064 and the time difference is 400 seconds. I have to check everything with respect to initial. Substitute these values in the first order reaction, you should again get some value of K. Then, case 3. is 3. I can say that initial concentration initial concentration is 0 0.15 final concentration is 0 0.042 and the time is 600 seconds. Again substitute this in the first order reaction. You will again get a value of K. If you get the value of K, same in all the three cases, then it will be a first order reaction. Right? Finally, you can say, since the value of K is 2.123 into 10 raised to minus 3 per second in the three cases is in the three cases right then therefore the reaction obeys obeys integrated rate equation integrated rate equation of first order. That's how you prove that a given reaction is a first order reaction. Right? Next figure on exam please. If the rate of reaction if the rate of reaction increases by a factor of if the rate of reaction increases by a factor of 2.36 when the temperature is raised when the temperature is raised from 303 Kelvin to 313 Kelvin when the temperature is raised from 303 Kelvin to 313 Kelvin find the energy of activation, find the energy of activation if R is 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. You tell us something like this before, like the fourth sum, log of K2 upon K1 to the base 10 is activation energy upon 2.303 R T2 minus T1 upon T1 T2 right that will be your formula once you have the formula substitute you should get your activation energy you know K1 upon K2 the factor is given to you R is given to you T1 T2 is given to you hence you should be able to get the value of activation energy the answer for this sum should be 67.6 kilojoule per mole Next, take on next one, please. The following reaction, the following reaction was carried out at 300 Kelvin. The following reaction was carried out at 300 Kelvin. Two sulfur dioxide gas plus oxygen gas gives you two sulfur trioxide gas. The concentration of sulfur trioxide gas, the concentration of sulfur trioxide gas is 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 moles per liter after 
6.4 minutes. Calculate the average rate of formation. Calculate the average rate of formation of sulfur trioxide. Calculate the average rate of formation of sulfur trioxide. So we did a sum very similar to this and that was the first sum. But there we were forming there to find out the average rate of the reactant. Here you have to find out the average rate of product. So when the reaction started, that is when time t was equal to zero, the concentration of product must have been zero. Therefore, the change in concentration is whatever is the final concentration of the product. Therefore, I could say that the average rate is going to be nothing but change in concentration of sulfur trioxide upon change in time. Change in concentration of sulfur trioxide is 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 minus 0. Everyone has understood from why I got minus 0 product. When time t was 0, there was no product. Therefore, the initial concentration was 0 upon change in time, 6.4. should get the answer for this. The answer for this should be 7.8 into 10 raised to minus 5 moles per minute. Next. The rate law for the rate flow for the action of chlorine gas the rate law for action of chlorine gas on nitric oxide on nitric oxide can be expressed as can be expressed as dx by dt is k times concentration of Cl2 into NO the whole square. Concentration of nitric oxide the whole square. What is the order of the reaction? What is the order of the reaction? with respect to chlorine next what is the order of the reaction what is the order of the reaction with respect to nitric oxide next what is the overall order of the reaction what is the overall order of the reaction. Next, what will be the units of the rate constant? Now this is more like a math sum, this is like your differential equation where you have to find out the order of the reaction. So I can say that Order of the reaction, order of reaction with respect to first part of the question, chlorine gas. What is the index of chlorine gas? 1. So the order of reaction with respect to chlorine gas is 1. Next, order of the reaction with respect to nitric oxide. What is the index of nitric oxide? 2. Therefore, the order of reaction with respect to nitric oxide is 2. Overall order of reaction will be nothing but order of reaction with respect to chlorine plus order of reaction with respect to nitric oxide. So that is going to be 3. Okay. Next they will ask you to find out what are the units of rate constant. Now K for this particular equation will be given by rate of reaction upon concentration of chlorine 
into concentration of nitric oxide the whole square now rate of the reaction is nothing but change in concentration of reaction per unit time if you know the definition then you should be able to tell me the unit rate of the reaction is the change in concentration of the reaction per unit time change in concentration means moles per liter right in unit time that means divided by uh, into t raised to minus 1 concentration concentration is always measured in the unit moles per liter concentration of nitric oxide moles per liter the whole square so in that case this will be moles per liter per time upon moles per liter into moles square per liter raised to minus 2 so mole and mole would get cancelled per liter per liter will get cancelled so the unit of constant will be moles raised to minus 2 l raised to 2 and t raised to minus 1 that will be the unit for your uh, rate constant fine next take on next some please a reaction that is of first order a reaction that is of first order a reaction that is of first order with respect to reactant a a reaction that is of first order with respect to reactant a has a rate constant has a rate constant of 5 per minute has a rate constant of 5 per minute if we start with the concentration Five moles per liter. When would the concentration of A reach a value of zero point zero five moles per liter? When would the concentration of A reach a value of zero point zero five moles per liter? if gas is constant is 8.314 into 10 raised to minus 3 kilojoules per mole per kelvin first order reaction i can write the integrated equation k is equal to 2.303 upon t log of initial concentration Upon final concentration to the base ten, all the values are given to you. Should be able to get the time here. The answer for this sum should be time is zero point nine two one two minutes. Next, you know, next sum please. A first order reaction. A first order reaction is. 20 percent completed. A first order reaction is 20 percent completed in four minutes. Is 20 percent completed in four minutes. Calculate the time required. Calculate the time required. For completion of 60 percent, calculate the time required for completion of 60 percent. First order reaction. I can use the integrated equation. K is 2.303 upon t log of a upon a minus x to the base 10. Once I use this equation, a Why have I taken A as hundred? Because they've given you in terms of percentage, right? So I'll come. I know A, I know X, I know T. So I'll get the rate constant. Once I get the rate constant, 
then I can say but for 60% completion A will be 100 X will be 60 you have to find out time K you would have found out from the above equation so I can again use the formula K is 2.303 upon T log of A upon A minus X to the base 10 right K is already found out, T will be the unknown, you should be able to get the value of T. The answer for the sum should be T is 16.41 minutes. 16.41 minutes, right? Next, take your next one, please. The half life time, the half life time for decomposition of a substance the half life time for decomposition of a substance the half life time for decomposition of a substance dissolved in carbon tetrachloride is 2.5 hours at 30 degrees Celsius. At 30 degrees Celsius. How much of the substance will be left after 10 hours? How much of the substance will be left after 10 hours? If the initial weight of the substance is 140 grams, how much of the substance will be left after 10 hours if the initial weight of the substance is 140 grams? Now the half life period is 2.5 hours. So I can say that number of half life period half life periods in 10 hours n will be nothing but t upon t half. So t is 10 upon 2.5. That means there will be four such half life periods. Therefore. Quantity left after n half life periods is given by the formula 1 upon 2 raised to n into initial quantity. Right? You know the value of n, you know initial quantity, you should be able to get the answer for this. The answer for this should be 8.75 grams. Right? Next, take on next one please. The rate constant, the rate constant and half life period, the rate constant and half life period for first order reaction, the rate constant and half life period for first order reaction having energy of activation having energy of activation 39.3 kilo calorie per mole has 300 kelvin and a frequency constant of 1.11 into 10 raised to 11 per second just make the collection in the sum I will read the sum again calculate the rate constant this is not the rate constant it is calculate the rate constant and half life period 
for a first order reaction having energy of activation 39.3 kilocalorie per mole then um, at 300 degree celsius if the frequency of frequency constant is this now uh, since this is kilocalorie convert this into calorie so this is going to be 39.3 into 10 raised to 3 calorie per mole right 300 degree celsius convert this into kelvin so this is 300 plus 273 degree kelvin right now they have asked you to find out the rate constant and the half life period they have also given you that take of these r is 1.987 this is given to you the constant for this gas constant for this is given to you as 1.987 First order reaction. I can say log k is log a minus e a upon 2.303 rt rt e a and a. All of them I know. I will come to know my rate constant. Once I know my rate constant, then I can find out my half life period. I can say half life period is 0 0.693 upon k. k I will come to know from the first formula. Right? The answer for this sum should be 1.11 into 10 raised to minus 4 per second. That will be your value of k and your half life period should be 6242 seconds. Right? Okay. We will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.